Hello, I'm Paul Aspin, a producer and mixer from Full Fat Music, and welcome to Sonic Academy's introduction to Logic Pro 11 Level 1. This course is very much aimed at beginners and it's meant to take you from opening Logic for the very first time right through to exporting your first track as quickly as possible. We're going to look at setting up your audio card, exploring Logic's GUI, we're going to create some drum tracks, create some synth parts, we'll do an arrangement and some basic mixing and then we'll export our track. So I hope you learned something and here's the track that we're going to make. So in this tutorial, we're going to explore Logic's user interface. So this is the workspace. This is where we'll spend most of the time. Um, on the left here, you've got tracks. So as you create tracks, I'm just clicking this little duplicate button here. Um, there'll obviously be stuff in there, whether it's um, MIDI notes or audio. Um, as we create tracks, they'll stack on top of each other here on the left. And then we've got the ruler here, so it's showing us time in bars. At the moment you press play, you can see it uh, playing through there. So I'll just undo that. So we'll just go through some of the options that you can see here on the page. So we've got this library button, which is Logic's library of sounds. So um, it's like a combination of an instrument and then some plugins to go with it. So if I just click on the first one here, you'll see it loads up this bass instrument and then it's got some uh, plugins to go with it as well that they're sort of suggesting uh, all work together. I'm just playing that back there through the MIDI keyboard. Uh, just undo that. So to undo things, I'm pressing Command and uh, Z or you can do it from Edit there. I'm going to hide the library then. Um, this panel here I usually have open pretty much well all the time to be honest. Um, it just gives you some handy information so you don't have to change screens as often. Um, I get into this but if you've got the mixer open for example to see the faders you don't necessarily have to open that you can grab the fader from here and you, you can also make changes with uh, these panels here on the left so it's just useful to have open most of the time. And we've got a quick help panel. So it'll give you contextual help depending on what you're hovering over. And then there's this little down arrow here which opens this sort of toolbar and you can put your own shortcuts in there. So if you've been using Logic for a while and you know you use certain functions quite often and you just want, it, want to be able to access them quickly, you can right click, customize toolbar and you can sort of add and take away things here depending on your own preferences then we've also got a smart controls button so again this will be contextual so it depends what you've got open but it'll give you sort of quick access to the most important features of whatever you've got open so I'll just <clears throat> open that synthesizer there you can see it gives you a cut off so if, as I move that you can see this is turning up and down um, and then resonance and, and things. So it usually gives you dials or sliders there just to give you quick access to things. So if I, you can sort of hide the plugin and just access things from here if you like. So I'll switch that off. Here's the mixer panel. Again, if I duplicate these tracks, just to sh just imagine that, you know, you're producing a track, you've got loads of tracks going on um, in the mixer page and you can see everything at once. But just to make it sort of clear, you can access the same fader from at least three different points in Logic. So you've got the one that's here, this left to right slider. And then you've also got it in this panel here and also in the mixer page. But you're not, it's not three different sliders, you know, you, you change the same slider. It's just three ways of doing it, um, different ways to access it. So to hide 
The mixer you can click X or you can click this button up here. They've all got shortcuts by the way. If you hover over them, um it usually tells you the, the shortcut there. So mixer button X it says. Then we've got the editors button. Um again that's it depends what uh whether you've got sort of MIDI or audio, but if I just create a right click, create a MIDI region, we could then start drawing some notes in here. Um, but the editors, editors button will show you that page. Or if you've got audio, it would show you some waveforms. So you can hide that by clicking P for piano roll. You've also got um, a score here and um, smart tempo there. But most common ones will be piano roll and the audio editor. Just moving on then, you've got the transport controls. So you'll have uh, fast forward, rewind, um, back to the beginning, stop play record and free tempo recording which is more of a live thing where if you can sort of play um live and then logic will figure out a, a tempo map for it but if you're not recording live instruments you probably won't use that too much um and then we've got cycle as well so often on playback you want it to just keep looping either while you're playing something over the top or maybe you're mixing um so this turns cycle on and off uh, you can also turn it on and off by clicking here just in this very top lane again if you hover just to this um, lower lane here it gives you um, a different cursor and that's so you can move the play ahead i think that takes a little bit of getting used to because it it's quite um it, some people think it's a little bit fiddly at first but you get used to it quick enough um, and then you can change the um, loop duration and position there and turn it on and off if you also if you click command you can see it changes shade here and that means that as you're playing back it'll skip that area instead of looping it which is useful sometimes if you're making an arrangement and um, you might want to see what it's like if it went from one section to the to the next and just skipped a part so it's um a way of doing that so that's command and click then we've got the um, tempo display. When you first get it, it might look a little bit different. I think it's defaults to this, but if you right click, click custom, gives you a little bit more information. So you've got CPU and hard disk usage. Then we've got, this gives you some information where it says no in. If I play a note, it tells you which note you're playing. Or if I play a chord, it tells you there E minor. Then we've got time signature and tempo, which you can change. And then um, these are the left and right locator. So they um, correspond, again, to, to these locator positions. And then we've got time as well. Just moving to the right then, we've got uh, the counting button. So when we're recording something, if I just put it here. I don't have that switched on and I press record it'll just start recording from there if I do have it switched on it'll give um, a counting so you see you get sort of four clicks there and then it would start recording and you can change that behavior you can change how um, long the counting is um, by right clicking then we've got the metronome which you can switch on and off so playing without the metronome there and you get a, a metronome or a click so you can record to a, a tempo so um, you can keep in time with your project basically then we've in the top right here we've got the list editor uh, I won't get too much into this there's it's not something I use personally but it'll give you some information um in the form of a list um, but there are other ways to do it so if i just show you what i mean I'm just plugging in some notes there and it'll give you the position information uh the note value and the, and the velocity etc but you can you can do change all all those um values from different places in logic um so i'll just hide that for now click p to hide that then we've got the notepad, which is really useful. Sometimes you'll be working on a project, but then you won't be able to work on it for weeks or months, and you um, you want to leave some notes for yourself to come back to. Um, it's good for writing notes in uh, for clients and vice versa. 
Uh, it's really useful if you're sort of listening back to a track and you're not working on it, but you want to write down um, some things that you want to action later on. You can just take loads of notes and then you've got a list to sort of work through. And then we've got the Apple Loops browser. So sort of, uh, loops that you can use in your project. There's a little drum loop there. You get loads of content when you first download Logic and um, some of its Apple Loops. Um, and then we've got the browser panel. So if you want to browse for files and then use them in your project, you can use that um, browser. So that's your project and then all files. You can drag things from outside Logic into Logic as well, but that's just a handy way to, to do that there. Um, here we've got horizontal zoom and vertical zoom. There's quite a lot of different shortcuts for zooming. You can press command in the up and down arrow or right and left. Uh, you can, if you're on this lower top pane here, if you click alt and drag down, you can sort of zoom into a specific area where your cursor is. Um, if I scroll up and down whilst clicking alt, you can see we get a vertical zoom and I've got a magic mouse here so I'm sort of scrolling left and right but a lot of mouses have like a similar function I think um alt and control does a kind of vertical and horizontal zoom at the same time so I'm just scrolling up and down there and then alt and shift is vertical zoom there so lots of different ways of zooming and you will need to zoom quite often um, sometimes you'll be zoomed in working on something um, and then you'll need to zoom out and see the full track the next second so you're kind of zooming in um, zooming in and out quite a lot so it's it's good to have a lot, a lot of shortcuts for that then what have we got here so there's a an auto zoom and what's that horizontal and vertical again I think so they're kind of a fit to page zoom. And then there's a waveform zoom. We don't have a, a waveform, um, any audio in there at the moment, but it would enlarge the waveform and make it easier to see without actually making it any louder. So that's useful. And then we've got smart, uh, sorry, snap. Um, and it's set to smart when we can change this. But snap, essentially, instead of this just moving completely freely, Generally, we're working to a grid, especially in dance music. So you want it to sort of snap to the um, the grid. So it just makes things easy to move around. And smart sort of has a guess at um, what division you want it to snap to. So you can change this manually. So if I change it to bar, I wouldn't be able to move it in between this um, one and two here. It'll just snap to two, three, four. Um, a good feature to have that. Then we've got um, catch here. So uh, if I zoom out a little bit, sort of here, see the catch is on at the moment. It will, depending on where the playhead cursor is, it'll catch the screen up, which is useful sometimes, but not other times. You might be sort of editing something, and then if you had catch on, it'll suddenly change the screen and you. You have to go back so if you want to switch that off that's where you would do it so that could be playing off screen um so it's just playing back this cycle but that could be playing off screen here but you could still be editing something over here then we've got flex time which is to do with audio and we'll cover that a little bit later as well as automation which we'll cover it later and the same for um, live loops which we're going to look at a little bit later as well uh, but that's where you would turn that on and off. And then there's some functions here, which you can often access from other places, but it just gives you another place to access them here. So let me just go through a few of the tools. So you can see here in the middle, we've got this left click tool, which is the um, icon you can see at the moment. And then we've also got this secondary tool or command click tool. So when you click command, it gives you this second option and that will depend on what you've got selected here so i've got the marquee tool i think it defaults to that that's the one that's kind of useful for um 
multiple different tasks so you can sort of cut things with that or you can select an area and, and move things or if you've got a bunch of things um this is command r by the way for repeat so if i wanted to sort of select an area and create a midi region you can do that or you know and it'll make it as large as the marquee selection so it's a, a good tool um to have on in general but you can you've also got things like the scissors tool and uh loads of other options as well there i'll leave it on marquee for now um let's have a look then we've got this little drop down arrow here this gives you some gives you more options here so we've got the arrangement track um a marker track a tempo track you can sort of automate the tempo time signature if you wanted to change the time signature if you're making dance music 99 percent of the time you can have it four four um and you probably won't touch that and then we've got this new chord track as well um so you can hide those there the arrangement track we will do a little bit later as well but if you've got your track arranged and then you can start naming sections like verse chorus and you can put these sort of colored blocks in there um, I'll hide that then and then we've got this duplicate track a shortcut which will just copy the track and all its settings but not the content of the track um, and then we've got this plus which is how you create a new track or you can right click in a free space and go new audio track or new software instrument etc you can do it like that there's usually a, a few ways to do the same um, task in logic just depending on, on workflow and what you like to do um so i think that's about everything for the user interface in the next video we'll start making a track and we're going to start with the kick drum